Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to build some pretty satisfying, blobby, blurry, blendy, animated background using a mix of CSS filters, mix blend modes, and animations. We'll do all of this with Tailwind CSS. Let's get right into it. All right, so yesterday I was browsing the web looking for some design inspiration and I ended up finding this website called Quals or Quals.com. So this is a really clean and simple design and one thing I particularly liked about it is these multicolor blurry shapes in the background. And if you pay attention, they're actually moving slightly. This is a really subtle touch, but I thought it gave this design a lot of character and brought it to life. So in this video, we're going to recreate this sort of background effect using Tailwind CSS utility classes. All right, so here's our starting point. We have this pretend bit of UI here, and I've made the background pink so you can see these shapes better, but I will now change that to BG gray 50. And I'll also hide all of this UI for now by giving it an opacity of zero with opacity zero. So now we can focus on building the background and then we will bring back these elements on top of it. Okay, so this div here is the container where we want to have our background shapes placed and we're going to absolutely position these little shapes. So this container here will take a class of relative. All right, let's create a first shape. So it's going to be a div and we'll give it some classes. The first one will be absolute. Let's go with top zero, but we'll offset it to the left a little. So minus left four we're going to give it a width and height of 72, a background of purple 300 and rounded full. And here's our first shape. So now I will duplicate this. And for this one, we're going to change the color to BG yellow 300. And instead of minus left four, we're going to go minus right four. And here it is. All right, let's create one more of this shape. So I'll duplicate this. And this one will be pink 300. And for the positioning, we're going to go with minus bottom four and left 20. And here it is. And actually let's go with minus bottom eight. So it's a little bit more offset. There you go. So if we inspect the original website with the dev tools and let's go and delete the image for now, you can see that where the two shapes overlap, there is a different color, which is some sort of a blend between the two. And to do this, we're going to use mix blend modes. I'll go and select my three shapes, one, two, three. And for each, I will give it the class of mix blend and we will go with multiply. And now you can see that our colors are blending together and composing new colors where it overlaps. Okay, next, another obvious thing that we're missing is these blurry edges, right? So for this, we're going to use CSS filters and the blur filter. To apply any filters in Tailwind, you need to first use the filter class, which operates as a toggle to switch on the filters. And then we're going to use blur. And here we're going to go with a really blurry blur. So blur 2XL. And it might be just a little too much. So let's go with just blur XL. All right, so now it's starting to look pretty interesting. Let's bring back our original UI by removing the opacity on it and see how it looks. And yeah, that's pretty cool. I think the background shapes are slightly too intense though. So for all three, we'd also add an opacity of 50% with opacity 50. And you know what? Let's actually go with 70% opacity just to make sure that you can see it properly on the video. So now let's add the clutch feature of this design and bring some motion to these shapes. So like here, we're going to have a slow and infinitely repeating animation on each of the shapes. And I'll head over in the Tailwind config file and we're going to extend two things. First, we're going to extend keyframes. And here we're going to define keyframes for our blobby animation. So I'll call this one blob. And so we'll have a first keyframe for the 0% step. And we're going to apply a transform, which is going to be scale of one. So it's the default scale for the starting point. Next keyframe will be at 33%. Once again, transform and this time we'll overshoot a little bit so scale 1.1 let's duplicate this and at 66 percent the transform scale will be 0 0.9 and one more copy for the 100 percent step and there we'll go back to scale one so that's only one part of our animation but let's start with this and now we need to also extend the animation object which we can also call blob and here we're going to use the 
blob keyframe. So this here is referencing this blob keyframe animation. And our animation will go over seven seconds and it will loop over and over with infinite. Okay, let's go back in our HTML and for our first shape, the purple one here, we're going to add this animation. So we should now have an animate blob animation and yep, here it is. So let's see what happens. So now if you can't see it, cause it's quite subtle, let's go here and make it loop faster. So maybe over four seconds and we'll also transform to 1.2 and 0.8 to make it a little bit more drastic. All right, and now you can see it properly. So you can see it's moving outside and then back in. Back in the original design, you can see that the shape doesn't just scale up and down. It also slightly move up and down, right and left. So let's add a little bit of translate to our keyframes. So we'll compose this with scale. For the first step at 0%, we will start with translate, zero pixel and zero pixel. At 33%, let's also add a translate. And here we'll move by 30 pixels and minus 50 pixels. At 66%, we will go with minus 20 pixels and let's go back up to 20 pixels. And to close the loop here, we're going to go back to zero with translate, zero pixel, zero pixel. And now you should be able to see that our purple blob is kind of moving up to the right at the start and then back down. So that's a little bit too quick and too drastic. So I'll go back to what I initially had before updating the demo to seven seconds. And we were only scaling to 1.1 and down to 0.9. And that's going to give us a more subtle and smooth movement, which is what we are after here. We don't want to drag attention too much. We want to bring a little bit of delight, but not make it obnoxious and eventually distracting. All right, very cool. So let's go and apply this blob animation to our two other shapes. So I'll select this one and the one below and also add animate blob. And so now all our shapes are moving exactly at the same time in the same direction, which looks a little bit silly. Let me just come here and make our UI transparent once again. And as you can see, we're completely losing this blend of colors because everything moves as a block. Okay, here we could create different keyframe animations with different translate property values. But I think a simple trick that should work is to delay the animation between the different blobs. So we're going to keep the same animation and we're going to apply a different delay at the start. So the loops are out of sync and the shapes look like they're moving individually. What we're going to do is create some simple animation delay utilities in our CSS file. And that's going to allow us to delay any animation that we want. I will come in our Tailwind CSS file. I'll open at layer utilities block and we want to apply animation delay. So let's go with animation delay and go 2000 for 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. And here we're going to target the animation delay property and apply two second delay. And let's do another one for maybe four seconds. So animation delay 4000 and four seconds. Okay, so now we're going to apply the delay 2000 to the yellow blob and the delay 4000 utility to the pink blob. So let's scroll back up here. And here for our yellow, we have animate blob and we're going to keep this animation, but we're also going to apply a delay with animation delay 2000. And I'll come down in the pink one and this one will have animation delay 4000. Whoops, 4000. Okay, here we go. So now we have staggered our animation every two seconds. Let me select the three blur XL utilities and remove them. And so now it's a little bit easier to see that the purple starts, two seconds later, the yellow starts, and then two seconds after that, the pink starts. And it's a much more interesting movement between the shapes. Okay, let's bring back our nice blur effect. We're going to now bring back our UI by removing this opacity and see the final result. I'll make that a little bit bigger. And that's pretty cool. So like I mentioned, you can probably play around with the easing timing function. So it's less abrupt in certain parts of the animation, but at least now you know exactly how to recreate this pretty cool blurry background motion effect using Tailwind CSS. And that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.